Ladies and gentlemen, hello. So, as you know, I've been playing some Fallout London recently. Um, and I am well pre-recorded uh, before this video comes out. I'm up to 29 videos of Fallout London recorded, and Fallout London is going to be concluded with my 29th uh, video upload. So, uh, that's going to be the, the length of that going forward there. But... After uh, finishing up where I did, I figured it would be nice to just kind of get my thoughts out there on the mod and, and stuff like that. Um, yeah, and just kind of throw it out there because there, there was some good parts, bad parts, and yeah. So we're going to do that. But first, before we get into that, I'm going to uh, throw up back here just some gameplay from part 20 of my own uh gameplay this is the one where we were running back and forth and making a a base or at least transporting goods and stuff so i don't think there's too many spoilers but uh, just for those of you who have not seen my playthrough or um who want to play fallout london yourself without any spoilers i'd recommend that you do not uh watch this video because i'm going to be spoiling stuff because when i talk about stuff i like to spoil shit so um yeah and that's how it's gonna go so by the way uh behind me you can kind of see uh we have my my, my model that's recording uh, and i'm just gonna i'm just gonna be over here a little bit a little bit over on the side here but let's go let's start it up there's gonna be no audio for that it's gonna be me talking but he's running around doing his thing so, man, Fallout London was a huge, huge modding, you know, a huge mod for Fallout 4 by a huge team that did a lot of stuff. They made you know, music, they did a bunch of voice acting, all new assets, a whole new map, a whole lot of work went into the game, and they did a good job. It could have been a lot better, though. Like, a lot better. There's a, a lot of things that I did not enjoy about the game. A lot of things that caused problems. A lot of things that were just uh, annoying. And really kind of put me off to the whole experience. And, uh, yeah. So, I mean, if you enjoy Fallout, you'll probably enjoy this game going around... Uh, doing stuff, and if you're a Londoner or from the UK, or you know, or interested in seeing Fallout in some place that's not the United States, then this one's also good for you. you no, know, it's plenty good, right? Um, but there are problems, right? And I'm gonna be focusing on a lot of problems that I had with it and solved it and heard about it. Um, so yeah. So let's let's talk about the couple of things that I enjoyed. Um, it had some unique quest lines that were interesting. Um, it had some cool weapons. One that I get uh, around this video. I'm not sure if it is this particular video that's playing in the background or if it's a, a different one. Um, but. Like, I'm going to skip ahead to skip some of that dialogue there. But I get a really nice weapon that pretty much is my weapon for the rest of the map. Or not the rest of the map, the rest of the playthrough, I should say. And uh, then on the very last episode, we actually found something really cool that I wish I would have had earlier. And I wish I could have had for longer. But... Unfortunately, we just... <sighs> Fortunately, we did not get the chance to use it. I'm not going to spoil what that is or what the weapon I had was, but they were amazing. Okay. So going on to the things that I disliked about it. Um, first of all, the load times are insane. And I know that's just like any any Bethesda game, right? But it felt, I don't know, it's been a while since I played a Bethesda game, 
So I don't know if it was just Bethesda being Bethesda, or if it was the fact that this was for some reason just unoptimized and didn't load very fast. But any time you would go out to the huge London map, it would just take forever to load. So I actually had to get a load accelerator mod. Uh, very good mod, by the way. Uh, if you've seen me playing the game up to this part that I have in the background, you've known how much quicker it made loading. Because I'm, I'm pretty sure it took like minutes to load before, but now it only takes like seconds, right? Sometimes at most one minute, right? Really great, but that just kind of sucks. Um, also, they sometimes would put like nested buildings in each other for whatever reason and when i say nested i mean you have the outside main map right and then you go into like a building like a, a mega mart let's say and then inside that mega mart there's another door that leads you into another part in that mega mart let's say just for the sake of example here um a a freezer right so you go into this mega mart freezer that's just another loading screen. And then when you want to leave the freezer, you have to go through a loading screen to load the Mega Mart interior. And when you want to leave the Mega Mart, you have to go through another loading in order to load the main map, right? It just kind of sucks. I don't know why they would do that, especially because there were some that were only like one room large. And it just didn't make sense to really do that. There was probably a reason or something for why that happened specifically. Um... Maybe some of the enemies in the area didn't play nice together, so they were like, the only way to get rid of this is to literally put um, a, a block in so that they can't do that, right? Um, I don't know. Those things were kind of annoying. Uh, another thing that was annoying, not to me specifically, but to other people who enjoy the base building mechanic, and I figured I'd mention it now since we're doing base building in the background. Um... I've seen it mentioned that the pathfinding of the NPCs was really bad. And sometimes they would get lost or all get stuck somewhere and stuff like that. Like if you were defending against stuff, it would be bad. Um, I didn't have that problem because I really only use my base to store stuff and whatnot. And other than that, I, I didn't really care. Um... Yeah, I will say I wish there was a a location to build a base sooner than the one I got because if you've watched my playthrough, you know I was hoarding all of my stuff in this like bag in the middle of this one location, and it was just so annoying. But I digress. Anyway, um, yeah, the uh, coasters that were a collectible item. You couldn't put those on the display board. That was a glitch that was happening, apparently, because they were supposed to be displayed because they had a display board, but they couldn't be removed because they were quest items for whatever reason. That sucked. Um, just having those kind of cluttering up my miscellaneous tab. You know? Um, I do enjoy the fact that they included a um, Lovecraftian reference with... Um, you. Maybe see the cute Thulu dolls that I've been collecting. Those were cool, uh, having that in there. Whether or not that place that they lead you to is cool, well, watch video 29 when it comes out. And, uh, yeah. But, a lot of stuff, right? So one thing that really started to get annoying, and if you're watching my playthrough, you'll notice it, because at a certain point I stop exploring locations, I just ignore them, um, is all of the... Uh, there's two parts to this, I guess. The first part is that a lot of places seem to just be there to clutter the map with location. Um, there's places like... A bunch of pubs, which are just little pubs out in the open, right? Those are fine because they give you a collectible item. The coasters, which raise your stats and stuff. Those are okay. 
But then there's these, like, other buildings that are, like, I think one we had, like, a fashion boutique that was just a random fashion boutique. It consisted of one floor and a basement, and there was nothing of value in there other than two ghouls. And that was the entire interior of that place. You had to sit through a loading screen to basically kill two ghouls. And then there was no amazing loot. There wasn't anything crazy inside. Not even a legendary enemy. It was just... Pointless. And that's what a lot of the places inside felt like. It felt like there were just... It, it was pointless to have them. All that they existed for was to house a couple of enemies and then a bunch of junk items. There was no, like, big payoff at the end for anything. And that leads me to my second point with, even if it was a big interior and there's some, like, sprawling dungeon to go through um, of killing enemies, looting stuff, getting all this right, and usually what happens in a Fallout game or in uh, Bethesda game or whatnot, at the end, there's a large treasure chest. And when you get the treasure chest, it gives you, like, decent weapons or stuff you can sell um, or, you know, just drugs or, in Skyrim's case, potions and stuff that are useful. But in, in this one, for one thing, Sometimes they're just empty. I've seen what look like the, you know, those green trunks? Um, or just like those uh, chests that I placed down that were on the left side of the screen earlier. Um, those, they look like they should contain, like, treasure items, right? But they're just empty. Um, other times they'll just contain a little bit of ammo, maybe some Radex or Radaway, a couple of drugs. Um, but then they have like a crude rifle in them and it's just like yay this was so worth coming in here for not really there's not like any cool unique weapons or, or anything like that that you're finding in these places it's just oh or the same i could have not came in here and had the same experience other than killing some guys and getting some experience um but yeah other times Speaking of the loot, um, you'll get to one of these end zones, which is like the ending of where the loot is supposed to be, right? And the loot will be locked in a chest. I don't think I've ever seen like a Bethesda game hide loot at the end of a dungeon behind a locked chest. Like... Sure, maybe there's, like, a chest that's, like, a bonus chest that's locked, but they still have, like, a normal chest that has loot in it um, and stuff like that, right? I don't, I don't remember. I could be wrong, but I feel like, for whatever reason, in this playthrough, I was just getting snubbed of loot. I wasn't getting any loot at all from things, because either they would, like, lock stuff behind chests that I couldn't open because I didn't spec into lock picking this playthrough or the chest would be empty or they just have trash in it or anything like that, right? And it was pretty frustrating to not really have anything at the end of dungeons because, you know, that's kind of like a payoff, right? You fight through, you see something cool at the end and you're like, awesome, I got this, that's awesome, that's cool. You know, I, I made that. Um, even some of the, like, bar interiors, they were completely empty of enemies. The only thing of value in them was the, the beer coasters, right? Because, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm thankful I got some of the coasters, but just nothing in there except for the coasters, and then I guess beer or glass if you wanted the junk to, like, build stuff with. But still, that's insane um yeah uh, another thing that annoyed me they have a plasma pistol in the game but it's horrible it's really bad 
Like, it is, I think, the worst gun I've ever fired. It's worse than the musket. Yeah, I said it. Worse than the musket. Um, it was truly awful. And because the way you fire it, you fire it like a revolver almost, where you, like, have your hand on the grip, and then you have a hand on the hammer mechanism, right? But when you do that and fire it, it, like takes up, like, your hand being on the trigger, or, or the firing pin thingy, the hammer, sorry. It takes up your view, so it's hard to see where you're aiming after that, and it's like, oh my god, this sucks. And it didn't even really do that good of damage either, it was just a whole thing. And there wasn't a whole lot of, like, weapon variety, I thought. Like, there's the usual, like, laser guns and plasma... That comes up a little bit later, but then there was like service rifle, and then half the enemies were using crude rifles that sucked, and that when they dropped them, I had them and they sucked. But I was doing a melee playthrough anyway. So that's fine. Um, I didn't have to worry about having shitty guns because I was just running around with my melee weapon smacking people. It was good times. Speaking of, another thing that was kind of annoying, I don't know if it is something specific to Fallout or if it is just Fallout London, um, but I tried to play on survival difficulty and do a stealth mode build, right? A stealth melee build, I should say. However, I was just getting killed by, like, the first enemies you encounter. The rad rats that, you know, are baby enemies. Um, I was just getting, like, one shot, sometimes two shot by them early on in, in survival difficulty. So at, at one point I was like, I, I have to turn it down. I, I cannot continue fighting at this level and losing like an hour worth of progress because uh, an enemy decided to shoot me across the map with a, a crude weapon and I just died. It, it was awful. So I don't know if it's something to do with the weapons damage scaling on Fallout London's part, or if it's just I'm misremembering playing other Fallouts on survival. And I know I've played Fallout 4 on survival difficulty. Um, however, I did not play a stealth <laughs> melee build, so maybe I uh, was actually smart in doing my stealth sniper build thing. And taking out enemies before they could even see me, which could be a possibility. I don't know. Um, but. but yeah, um, there's also some things that I, I thought were really disappointing. The Pindar stations. I don't know if this was just me getting into my head that these should be like some amazing, crazy thing, kind of like the vaults in Fallout, but... Every single Pindar station we came across, with the exception of ones that were tied to story events, um, sucked. They were just little bunkers underground. Like, they had, like, a, a living area and a kitchen, and that was basically everything. And the rest of it was just nothing. There was no, like, crazy cool experiments going on down in them or anything like that. As far as I could tell, um, it was just... Oh yeah, the people who used this as like a fallout shelter, uh, they turned into ghouls. Kill them. Or some hooligans took this place over. Kill them. Yeah, kind of sucked. And, uh, yeah. The other thing is some quests had some issues for me. Um, there's one with the Vagabonds. It's a kind of a side quest with them anyway. Um, where... It tells me to talk to this guy, but he's kind of, I don't know if he glitched out or what, but he's stuck in this one specific place in the tavern, and he will not talk to me about the quest to continue it. So I kind of lost out on all that. Also, that quest line is horrible and boring. I absolutely hate it. The fact that it keeps going and going and going, and you're like, okay, surely this is the last time I've got to come talk to this guy, right? And then it just happens again, and I'm like, oh my god, please stop. But whatever um yeah it's also pretty vague how you join factions um other than the vagabonds who you pretty much get forced into joining right away 
Um, I I literally did not find any other faction to join, um, other than like the Tommies. But we'll get to the Tommies in a second here. Um, we did come across some other ones. Uh, we came across in my playthrough Camelot, the Fourth Column, the Rounders, and the other people the Rounders are fighting against. Um, we also came across some Utilitarians, but I'm not sure if I could join them. Um, but none of those groups, except for the Vagabonds, were ones that I were able to, like, talk to and join. None of them had, like, any, like, go here and join up with us kind of things. Like, you know, normally when you talk to, like, an NPC of a faction, they're like, yeah, if you go to uh, the Legion Outpost at yada yada, you can join up with them, right? Like that, or if you talk to um, someone, they'll be like, yeah, you can go over here and do this. Like, usually your first encounter with someone will point you in the direction of where you can go to join that faction. Um, but no, I would just see all of these fifth column people around and not be able to join their faction um, because they were just all over the place. I couldn't tell what was their main area. I couldn't tell what was just a place that they were exploring. Um, it was weird, right? And uh, that really kind of sucked. Yep. Uh, so, speaking of quests, one thing I found annoying is that some of the, like, quest areas, they'd be locked behind a door in a place. And it happened to me, like, at least two, maybe three times. But I'd be blowing around just exploring locations, not following any quest markers or anything. I'd find a place, and it would be like, the door is locked, or you cannot open it at this time, or some nonsense like that, right? And I'd be like, okay, I guess I'll just leave now. And most of those were behind, like, loading screens. Like, they weren't just out in the open, uh, open world, interact, oh, can't go in. No, I would, like, go into a place, explore around a little bit, find a door, and it'd be like, nope, you can't come in here. And I'd be like, great, I guess I'm turning right back around then. And uh, only later to be given a quest to go into those places and just magically have the door open for me without having to have a key or anything anyway. So that was annoying. Um, and the other big thing is, speaking of locking you out of quests, I actually could not complete the main quest line. And that's why I stopped at 29 uh, videos. Because at one point we go into this location and we do some quests and we explore some stuff. And apparently doing that quest before you get to a certain point in the main story makes it so you cannot get the main story quest. You can't even use console commands to get that main story quest. So I finished the last main story quest I was on, and then it just ended abruptly. No more main story quests. I was told I had to talk to the Tommies about getting a gas mask or something. And so I was going around the map looking for where their base was at, but I was like, why don't I have like a map marker telling me where to go? This is weird. Usually there's like a quest that's like, hey, yeah, go talk to the Tommies and do this, yada, yada, yada. So we spent a couple of, uh, couple of parts uh, of episodes just going around looking for the Tommy base. We finally found the Tommy base after I looked it up and figured out where exactly where I was to uh, join them and get this gas mask. But the guy wouldn't talk to me about it. So I was like, what the heck am I doing wrong? So I looked it up and I was like, Fallout London, main story quest. So I followed along what quests I'd done and find out that there's this quest called Heaven Slayer that gets broken if you do a if you go to the bank of england before that quest so if, if you find the bank of london don't go in it don't even don't even deal with it just just walk away don't be like me and lock your set out of what like a 30 40 hour playthrough because you decided to explore instead of doing the main quest 
But uh, that was very frustrating. And, uh, like, I was considering already just being like, hey, guys, I'm, I'm double following it. I'm not playing anymore. Um, but I was like, I'll, I'll tough it out. And I'll just do, like, the main quest lines and finish that. Um, but when that happened, and I can't even do that, I don't, I don't even care about the side quests anymore. Speaking of the side quests... Um, the Vagabonds have a mission where you have to go somewhere that you cannot get to until you get to a certain part in the main quest. Which sucks. Yeah. Fortunate. But, uh, yeah, that's kind of what happened to me and my experience. Another thing that I really don't like, and I talk about it all the time in my playthroughs, but... The factions that you have access to, or I guess just the Vagabonds so far, um, I hate them. First of all, you're kind of forced to go talk to them. I mean, sure, you can go talk to the Thames folk first, but you can't join the Thames folk, right? Um, you just kind of chill there, right? And uh, I'm, I'm going to go off on a tangent real quick here with Yvette. Yvette... The first Vagabond quest you really get is to go and save this group of people from... Well, not save them. You, you have to tell Yvette to, like, not mess with an execution that's going to happen. But she's the only one in the Vagabonds that sells medical supplies. So if you trigger that quest before you've gotten enough medical supplies from her... There's nowhere else to get medical supplies unless you go talk to the Thames folk. But in order to do any trading with the Thames folk, you need to do a, a quest for them, which you might get hurt on. And keep in mind, this is right at the start of the game, so you don't have a good stock of medical supplies or anything. So if you didn't talk to her beforehand and buy out her stock with whatever money you had on you, you're screwed. So, yeah, a good portion of the first time I, I was just not able to get any medical supplies unless I looted them, which was awful as well. But, um, yeah, so going back to the, the Vagabonds, I did not like them at all. They're just a little... They're Vagabonds, literally. They suck. They are awful, awful creatures. And um, I, I really wished that I could have joined their enemy and killed them all. I hated them. I hated their whining. I hated their whole, like, shtick about them being like, we're the vagabonds and we're cool and we're really swell guys, even though we're like criminals who steal shit and yada, yada, yada. And I was like, oh my God. They're awful. I don't know how the Isle of Dogs Syndicate did not wipe them out. There's like 10 of them, but there's like dozens of Isle of Dog people. It makes no sense that there are still existing. I, I literally do not get it. It's weird. Yeah. I wanted to erase them from like existence. And there's just a couple other like quest related things that like I really wanted to take in one direction but they kind of hard aligned you into a specific other direction and that was annoying like there's this one quest where you have to do a favor for this one group in order to have this uh, other group not get taxed for something and so you do it, and then you find out that the group you're helping um, to not get taxed, uh, that group basically screwed over the guys you're helping to, yeah, to, like, fix their tax problem. And so I wanted to be like, hey, no, tax these guys into the ground. But the only options I had were, hey, forgive their taxes. Hey, forgive their taxes. Hey, dick, forgive their taxes. And it was like, really? I can't be like, yeah, yo, these guys betrayed you. Um, my bad, I didn't have the whole story, so uh, just tax them anyway. No, because I helped out at all. 
they uh you know decided to do stuff. Yeah. Kinda of sucked. Now there were some interesting things. There were some nice memes all around. Like the Kilroy was here memes that are just spray painted out all around. Those are kinda of cool. Also other spray paint memes that are up there and stuff, and then also some other references to things and, and stuff like that that I probably did not understand because I'm not British. But I'm sure all the Brits got a kick out of. That'd be great. Um, but yeah. All in all, my experience with Fallout London was, at first, I enjoyed it. Because it was like another Fallout I get to explore and have fun with, right? I get to go around and you know, do my thing. And then I realized my efforts were not being really rewarded at all. Because I was just not getting loot and not having a good time. Or I would go into a building and it would be mostly empty and only take me a couple minutes to clear and then I'd have to sit through a loading screen to get outside again. And honestly, it, it just dragged on. Felt. Also, the perks selection thing sucked. I didn't like the way they did it, um, where I had to like scroll through an entire list every single time. I don't know why they didn't have a perk chart. I feel like having a perk chart, chart would have worked just fine. Like, I know they were probably trying to be different than like Vault Tech and stuff with the Vault Boy, but they could have still done it. Like, let's be real. But instead of like a nice, easily readable like grid thing, that you have with the Fallout 4 perk chart. You're instead thrown back into like Fallout 3 and New Vegas land where they just give you like a, a scroll bar and all these different perks that are like, yeah, you gotta get you know, this level to do that and this level to do that. And you have to go like scroll through each one. You can't just select whichever one you wanna get. You have to scroll down to select that one, which I just think is annoying. It's just a little, inconvenient thing um was unfortunate but uh yeah <sighs> honestly i was pretty disappointed with it especially the fact that i can't even complete the main story quest because that sucks i couldn't even complete the vagabond story quest because it's locked behind the main story also, I found the Camelot, like, location, but I couldn't get into it, and there was no one at the door, so I couldn't talk to anyone. I don't even know how to join them or any of the other factions that I've met. It just all kind of sucks. And, uh, I'm really glad my character was one who would, like, just kill anyone for any reason and was just dumb because he just doesn't care because he's dumb because god it's crazy one last thing that i really disliked about the game and i get why they did it but it's still annoying and it is when you go into the water you instantly start getting like two to three hundred rads per second, which means if you're in the water for more than like five seconds, you're dead. Which has sucked because sometimes I'm not sure if that water is part of the Thames River and I'm going to just instantly die, or if that water is part of a little stream or puddle that I'm okay touching, right? Especially when it's dark out, and that's another thing. Oh my god, it's so dark in this game. And there's like no way to increase the brightness, and the flashlight sucks. So you're like, half the time you can't see anything. Which, for you guys who like... For me, I can like adjust my screen's brightness. But for you guys who are like stuck with the brightness of the game... It's got to be awful, because there's some times when you guys are probably seeing pitch, pitch black nothingness. And that just sucks. Um, but yeah, like... Uh, 
I understand they wanted it so, like, you couldn't just go swimming through the Thames, like, get across the river without going across bridges. Um, but for God's sake, did it have to be, like, instant killed stuff? Like, there are times when I'd, like, accidentally slip and, like, miss do a jump and fall into the Thames, and then I would just die because I couldn't get out. Because there was, like, nowhere for me to, like, jump up to or, like, walk out of it from. So I would just die. And even if I took, like, a little dip, like, dipped a toesy in, I would be, like, 300 freaking rads worse. And that really sucked when I was, like, first starting out because I didn't have the supplies to, like, cure my rad away, right? I didn't have the rad away to get rid of my rads. So I was, like, at half health sometimes because I just took a little dipsy and oopsie doopsie, I'm irradiated. And it was awful. But... I can understand why they did it. And it really added a level of, oh, I should just not walk in the water anymore. And I knew that, but there were times when you just can't help it. It just happens. You know, you're like walking around and, you know, you see a place over there and you're trying to get to it, or it looks like it's, you know, part of like a puddle, but you don't think it's gonna eradicate you too crazy. And you touch it, and you're like, oh, well, there goes 200 rats. Shit. Right? It was just... God dang, man. God dang. But, uh... Yeah. I was really looking forward to the Fallout London 2, and unfortunately, uh, it just did not live up to my expectations. But things, things rarely do live up to expectations, right? And we're just gonna stop the video now. Come back over to the chatting screen, because we're, we're, we're about done here. But, my god. I was so looking forward to Fallout London. I'd been watching it for, like, a year or more. And then it came out, and I was like, awesome. This is going to be great. I got it, like, day one, downloaded, ready to play it. And then went on the journey, and it was okay. It was beautiful for, like, a while. And then it just got not so great. Yeah. There are plenty of other little smaller bugs here and there, hither and thither, to and fro, that I encountered that were annoying. And at times I would even just straight up throw on God mode or throw on uh, collision off so I could like go through stuff. And honestly, Honestly, one of the worst enemies in the game, in, in like any game ever, they have these stupid landmines. Well, not the mines. They're, they're naval mines with legs. And since I'm a melee character, I basically get one shot by them because they blow up. And if you kill them, they also blow up. Kind of like sentry bots, you know, in Fallout 4. Except, way worse. So those were like, open up, console, select, kill. And I would just kill them from a distance with console commands, because they were just awful. Also, I don't know if there's power armor in the game. It feels like there should be power armor, because that's kind of a staple of the universe, right? Especially since the US and the UK are allies, I think. I don't know. You would think so. I mean, the UK has some US tanks, right? Why wouldn't they have older sets of power armor? But anyway, I digress. I'm, I'm going to end up rambling if I keep doing things, because I'll keep remembering something that annoyed me with the game, and I'll be like, oh yeah, by the way, this, 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 and that. <sighs> Better decide. Don't worry. But if you want to try Fallout London, feel free to do so. I mean, it's free to do if you have Fallout 4, so you, you might as well, right? You don't have to pay. Just don't be like me and go to the Bank of London before you do the main quest. Because if you do, you brick your game and you won't be able to continue. Even with console commands, which is insane. Sorry, I hit a button. Which is insane if you think about it. That you cannot even use console commands. That it screws you up so bad that you're just screwed. Anyway, 
Thank you all for watching me ramble on about Fallout London and why I didn't like it for 40 minutes here. Uh, I'm plaguing, and uh, continue watching the rest of the Fallout London series, because there is some cool stuff that actually does happen. And uh, watch as the life slowly goes out of me. As I realize how much I start to hate the game, how it was made. And uh, enjoy that. That's really nice. Don't get me wrong, there are some cool locations out there to explore, but the payoff is very little. Yeah. All right, folks, that's it for me now. You all have a lovely rest of your time. And until next time, bye for now.